Hey, how's it going guys? I'm Ryuz and welcome back to my channel. I hope you are doing well. It is really raining hard outside. So for this week deck showcase, I thought this was the perfect time to bring back Satori back to the spotlight because she just got her buffs and she became a really decent and reliable Shikigami now. Not only she can let us pick at the opponent's hand, she can also snipe the opponent's Shikigami very easily. So without further ado, let's get into the deck rundown, shall we? The playstyle of this deck is pretty straightforward. You either stall until your opponent in entire deck is deleted or you can go on the offensive and snipe all of the opponent's Shikigami then beat them up. So first up we have Taisha Ten. This time we're going pretty cheap on his card because we don't really need his SSR. For him I'm bringing one bestowal. I'm mainly using this when I want to switch the target of the Lotus but you can also use this as a draw card. Then we have two the Holy King. Since we're not bringing his SSR this alone will make it harder for the opponent to maintain their Shikigami because we keep dealing damage to them. Then we have two do good deeds. This is pretty much standard for any build that involves Taishakuten because how good the card is. Then we have two ideal nation. Sure bringing do good deeds might seem better but once you activate this your opponent main damage dealer will become absolutely useless. Then we have one evolve. This card will let us save up our cards because Taishakuten will just activate his cards on his own. Next is our cute girl that's just been buffed. Satori. She is pretty much our only offensive option until we evolve Fujime. But she can do a lot more things now. For her, I'm bringing two Club Bomb. This card is really good now because you can easily snipe a Shikigami that has five or more health. Then we have one Imitation. This card can actually reach a pretty decent number and it is a combat card so I need to bring at least one of those. Next is one Extort. This one is actually really good because you can put back your opponent's combo pieces back into their deck then MOBA will have a chance to delete that card. Next card is 2 Vision. That lifesteal keyword is a godsend for this card because now you can actually use her to attack and gain back a bit of your life. And if Satori is attached with Fujiro, this card becomes even more powerful. The next card is 2 Grudge. Killing any Shikigami that deals damage to you is really good. It doesn't even matter what kind of damage they dealt as long as you get hit, that Shikigami will die. Then we have our lovely deck the leader, Moba. I just love using her and I will always try and find a way to make her useful. And in this build, she fits really well. For her, I'm bringing two MOBA Su. Deleting three cards from the opponent's deck right away is really good and this synergizes really well with her level 1 form. Then we have one pleasant surprise. A fast draw card is really good and to gain the enhanced effect is really easy because of the level 1 form. But do be careful when using this because you still have to discard one card. Next card is two Heaven's Treasure. This is the main gimmick of this deck. We will try and stall as long as possible until the opponent ran out of cards. And the reason the opponent will run out of cards before we do is because we have for Evolve and MOBA Su. Next card is 2 Ball Barrage. This is still a really good card to clear the combat zone and there's not many Shikigami that can take a full 8 damage without dying. Last is 1 Evolve. You guys can read what it does and you will know what to do with it. I absolutely love the Evolve. And lastly we have the most powerful support for blue Shikigami for now, Fujihime. She is here as our buffer and another stall option with her cards that can summon Servitor. For her, I am bringing two Hall of Flowers. Since we're bringing two cards that can summon Servitor, this will let you get back the Fujiiro when the Servitor dies. Then we have one Mysterious Echo. I haven't seen No Kanchi in rank since he got nerfed, but there's still a lot of Shikigami running around that have summons. And even if you don't see them, you can just use this as a draw card and summon a free blocker. Next card is one. Next card is one Dream Weaver. This will summon a pretty big blocker for you. Of course you can bring the Phantom Echo to get a bigger blocker, but most of the time our match will end shortly after we reach level 3. Next is to evolve. This is mandatory so that your Shikigami can actually attack and not die. Even if the Fujiiro buff is random, it's still a really good card to bring. And the last card we bring is to Immemorial. If you don't have this, you can definitely bring Wisteria Dance instead, but with Immemorial, it is much easier to manage the Fujiiro. And that's about it for the deck rundown. This deck is really fun to use and I would suggest to try it if you want to experience a different kind of winning. Anyway, let's move on with the replays.
For the first match, I thought I'd show you how this deck plays against aggro. I'm sure you guys have doubt, so this match will clear that doubt right away. Ideally, we want to get MOBA's form early, but if that's not possible, try to get Satori's card or Fujihime's Evolve as your alternative. They get the first turn, so they put a form on Kidomaru and pass. That form is going to be very annoying because they have Hanya. On our turn, while we have the chance, we attack with MOBA to delete their card and pass. At the start of their turn, Kidomaru form activates because they drew his card, they activate face changing, and of course they got prank. And attack one more time. After that they activate another face changing for that extra shield. And if that wasn't enough, they activate Punishing Hand and deal a total of 16 damage in one turn. Jesus, their hand is pretty much perfect to be able to play that much. Right then. At the start of their turn, Kitomaru form activates again. God, they're lucky. They attack with Hanya. Then activate two Serpent Lash to restart our Fujiro and pass. On our turn, we evolve Fujihime. Then activate Dream Weaver to summon a 5 stat Servitor and pass. At the start of their turn, Kidomaru form activates again for the third time. And this is very frustrating. They activate Unprecedented to kill our Servitor before dealing 3 damage. Then they attack with Kyohime to deal another 5 damage and pass. On our turn, I am so sick of that Kidomaru so we activate Bestowal on him, then activate Ideal Nation. After that, we kill their Kyohime with MOBA and pass. Unless they have two combat cards, they will not get over our MOBA. On their turn, they attack with Hanya, that will reset our Fujiro. But that's okay, they activate Soul Massacre to hunt our Fujihime, but they forgot Ideal Nation is still active, so that will not deal any damage. On our turn, we're going to take out Suzuka Gozen with Club Bomb because we see Radius on their hand, then put Heaven's Treasure on MOBA. We still have one turn to spare, so I choose to delete their deck while we can. On their turn, they put the same form on Kidomaru, then use him to attack and pass. On our turn, we put Vision on Satori, then use her to attack and recover our health back to 5 and pass. On their turn, they activate Sacrificial Fire, destroying our ideal nation and pass. Okay, next turn Suzuka Gozen will revive and we will die if we don't do something. We attack with MOBA and pass, leaving one or four trigger. This way, the moment the piercing hits us, Suzuka Gozen will die before getting the second hit. <laughs> On their turn, as we predicted, they will attack with Kyohime first, then use Radius. We healed by 2 points before the attack hits, and when the piercing hits, she will get hit by Grudge and instantly die, so they will pass. On our turn, we evolve Taishak then. Then use Satori to attack and recover our life again. On their turn, they realize they can't possibly out our board, so they will surrender. Our second matchup is against a mono blue deck with Satori. Very interesting. Let's see how well we can handle Onigiri and Shishio. They get the first turn, which is pretty bad for us because they have Onigiri and Yukihime. They will attack with Onigiri and pass. 
On our turn, we want to pick at their hand, so we level up Satori first, then put Heaven's Treasure on MOBA, then we put Heaven's Treasure on MOBA. After that, we activate MOBA Soup to delete 3 cards from their deck and we pass. On their turn, they will not do anything except attack with Onigiri and pass. This is the problem with Yukihime deck. Sure, you can control the opponent and not give them any advantage, but it takes a really long time and you don't have enough power to actually end the game. Since their Onigiri only has one attack, we use Satori to attack and pass. On their turn, they will switch their attacker with two Shishio and pass. On our turn, we put Vision on Satori, then we also put Hall of Flowers on Fujihime. That will summon a Servitor and we pass. The longer they leave us alive, the faster they will deck out. On their turn, they will evolve Yukihime. That will destroy our Servitor. Then they attack with Onigiri and pass. On our turn, we're going to bait the slash ability by putting another Hall of Flowers on Fujihime. Then we activate Imitation to kill the Onigiri. This was a slight misplay, I could've just attacked with the Servitor and not waste my cards, but oh well, we got a pretty big blocker now. On their turn, they put Vision on their Satori, then user to kill our Satori. After that, they activate Extort to redraw our hand. They switch it with Satori's card. Very smart. On our turn, we have to sacrifice our Taishak pen so that they can't see more of our cards, and we pass. On their turn, they attack with Shishio, then activate Skilled Imitation to stun our Fujihime. After that, they activate Kurikaramaru to further damage our Fujihime. If only they can reset the Fujihiro, that would've been pretty dangerous for us. On our turn, we're going to attack with Moba, then put another Heaven's Treasure on her and pass. This is just me being very petty and cocky, so don't try this on your match. On their turn, they activate Onigiri's combat card, killing our Moba. After that, they will evolve him and activate Shishio's spell to stun our Fujihime and pass. So close, so very close, but not enough. On our turn, we activate Club Bomb to kill their Onigiri and we pass. They can clearly see our trigger card, so I will bet they will not attack on the next turn. On their turn, they will activate Free Hand and that hits our Satori. <laughs> very lucky, very, very lucky. They attack with Shishio and pass. Well, thankfully we still have our Immemorial. We activate that, then use Taishak 10 to obliterate their Shishio and pass. On their turn, they activate Club Bomb to kill our Fujime. Not that it matters since we already got our field, since we already got our field here. Then they put Vision on Satori and pass. That's where they made a mistake. On our turn, we will evolve MOBA, then use her to attack and delete 5 cards from their deck. And with 2 cards left on their deck, they can't possibly out our MOBA, so they will surrender. Well, that's all for today's video, I certainly hope you enjoyed it. This deck was surprisingly very fun to use and had a decent win rate. And it's pretty cheap too, so I would recommend it for you if you want to try to win with a different way. Anyway, if you want to support the channel, I have Patreon and Ko-Fi links down below. And as usual, if you have any kind of feedback, leave it down in the comments and see you next video. Bye!